I loved your story of how you chose La Leche as oh. the name. Can you comment yes. on that? Well, back in 1956, uh, you couldn't get the word breast in print. I mean, we couldn't say we're going to have a meeting and put a newspaper uh, little notice in and say to learn about breastfeeding. That was not allowed. So the doctor, husband of my friend Mary, he had heard about this shrine in Florida, uh, which is called Our Lady of La Leche. It's the oldest shrine to Our Lady in the United States. And the complete title in Spanish is Our Lady of Happy Delivery and Plentiful Milk. So the, the milk was La Leche. And we use that because we had no idea it was going to spread all over the world, and we'd have to be explaining to people what it meant and how to pronounce it. Well, you have been a real um, heretic, as you've been described, by the medical community. You've, you've uh, run up against the establishment a number of times. Uh. Mm -hmm. Well, not only uh, with doctors who didn't want somebody else telling their patients, as they were called then, how to breastfeed because it might conflict with what they were saying. But later on when I was asked to go to Washington to testify yes. at uh, different hearings or at meetings they had there, uh, the doctors weren't for breastfeeding. They just said if you're going to talk about the advantages to breastfeeding, you also have to talk about the disadvantages. Well, there's really no disadvantages when you're talking about the health of the baby or the health of the mother, because mothers are healthier if they breastfeed. Or if you're going to talk about the economy, there's no disadvantage because you're going to have a healthier population. So you're not going to be spending so many money, whether it's your personal money or tax dollars for mothers who are helped with their care of their baby. Uh, they found out that in the WIC program <coughs> where women and children are given food or formula for uh, their babies, that if all of the women in the WIC program nurse their babies for six months, that they would save millions of dollars in tax money. That you, so everybody wins when somebody breastfed, breastfeeds. Something that you describe in, in this book, and I, I remember this so well, that um, women who breastfed were looked down upon and it was they felt um, embarrassed because it was assumed that they might not be able to afford the formula and therefore that's mm -hmm. why they were breastfeeding mm -hmm. and you had this brilliant idea of finding some celebrities who so surely could afford to buy formula Princess Grace of Monaco right. being one of those. Mm -hmm. and So that was a, a brilliant marketing Thank you. move. Um, and well, what was that like, getting to know her? Getting to know her was uh, wonderful, because she turned out to be a really nice person. Her husband was very worried about her coming to Chicago alone. Her sister was supposed to accompany her, but her sister couldn't at the last minute. So I was the person that had to be with her all the time. And we spent time talking about raising children and our families, and she would talk about her um, sister felt that she was too um, understanding of her children and letting them get away with things. And I, I said, you know, who's supposed to know their children better than a mother? We talked about our births. I had had births at home. She had had a birth in, births in the palace. And she said that her husband wasn't in the room because she was having such a hard time speaking in French mm. while she's giving birth oh. that she wouldn't know who else was yeah. actually in the room. But she was very concerned about the effect of the life that she was living now on her children and how it would affect their choices later on in life. Uh, but otherwise, she didn't stand on ceremony. I could walk out of the door before she did. When we had um, champagne in the room, she would put ice cubes in with her hands. Not with, I mean, I was impressed with how regular she was. Mm -hmm. And from then on, we would manage to get together if she was coming to Chicago or I was going to be in Europe. We would try to work that out. So you've traveled around the world and, and met um, many famous people and um, spoken all over the world. 
and you always, um, coming home was always so important and I was just so impressed as you talked about home being your anchor and as the place for so many of, of life's um, occasions and events, births and, and weddings and um, even your husband's funeral, you argued to be held at, at home. Well, my family was always the most important thing. As I say in the book, it, it may make me look like a saint, but I really liked being with my family and I didn't like leaving them ever. Uh, but I had wonderful support for my family. My husband was the perfect husband because he understood how important it was for women to get the help they needed because we didn't get that help with our first three children. And we know how we were wondering, was something wrong with my milk or, you know, didn't I have enough? Why was this baby crying? So he was totally supportive. And I realized later on, because in those days you'd only make one phone call when you arrived in the country you were your destination. Um, it was they were so expensive phone calls in those days that when I'd call home, he'd always say, "Everything's fine. You know, you have a good time. The house could be on fire and back of him." But he wouldn't say that because he knew there was nothing I could do about it, and he wanted me to just feel confident and calm so I could do what had needed to be done. And plus my mother who lived a few miles away, the children adored her, my husband adored her, she adored being needed. Mm -hmm. She said, Miriam, when you get old, you want to know that people need you in their life. And so she would come and make all sorts of wonderful food that I never had time to make. Uh, and it worked out so I could leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, and as, as I was reading this, your mother reminded me of, of my mother so much, who was oh. my babysitter for my children. We really never had a babysitter. Mm -hmm. She was always is here. And um, you, though, make raising seven children look so easy. And today, you know, we have problems raising uh, one or two and, and have so much um, stress that we think is involved in child rearing. But I love when you described your system of organization. Can you comment on that? You mean about my Doing children? your chores and, yes. Oh, so. well, number one, I didn't want, being an oldest child myself, I didn't want my oldest child to feel burdened because I was having all these other children that she was going to be responsible for if I wasn't around. So fortunately, my children were born with, my husband and I had brown hair. First I had a blonde, then a brunette, then a redhead, then a blonde, then a brunette, then a redhead, then a blonde. And so I paired them off by hair color and that they were responsible for each other. They were always that group together. Um, and then on Saturdays, everybody helped clean the house. They all had certain jobs. They all had uh, their bedroom or their part of their bedroom that was theirs. And they also had part of the downstairs area. I would put on um, records, musicals. I love musicals. And it made me feel good. I don't know if it made them feel good, but they would have to do their work before they could get out of the house. And I started, to care, I started to catch on to the ones who would get done so fast, and I'd find most everything was under their bed, which was how they cleaned their room. But uh, I always say my house was the cleanest when I had all those children at home. That's definitely um, the way to do it, and I love that you use musicals. I'm, musicals yes. are very mm -hmm. dear mm -hmm. to my heart, so it's a great, great story. Um, any advice for um, mothers today for um, breastfeeding? First of all, I'd say get help. I would say go to La Leche. Really, you can get information out of a book, but, but being with people who breastfeed is a different experience, where you're just one of a group, you're not different, you're not having to defend it or explain it. It also gives you courage to make the decisions that you want to make in favor of your baby or your family when you're not alone, when you're, you know, you, you can, oh, you, uh, these other women will say, oh, yes, you know, that's a good idea, do that and you've got other people supporting you. And that's important, because it's hard. Uh, nowadays, women have so many things, so many expectations of what they're supposed to be able to do, even when they're having a baby. 
And the best thing is if you can just stay with that baby as long as possible, as much as possible. Not only because you breast, can breastfeed, but I think breastfeeding helps to make you be the mother your child needs. And each child is different. But that closeness, that skin to skin, that contact, that sleeping with, all those things really gives you intuition about your particular baby. And I think, you know, why are we a mother? To mother our babies. So the more that we can do to really meet that need, the fewer problems there's going to be later on. I think, you know, so often people are separated at birth, uh, the ba child never gets what he needs or feels like he's not getting what he needs, and it starts creating problems all along the line. So I think the fewer problems you can create by just being together, by listening to what that baby needs, and then having the courage, which your friends can help you with, to step out and decide to, do, to follow that need, the better for everybody. So well said, because really the act of, of breastfeeding is uh, about integrating mind, body, and, and spirit, both mm -hmm. for mom and, and baby. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, absolutely. Well, this has been Feed Your Mind Wellness. I'm here with Marion Thompson. I'm Dr. Sandy, and again, Marion's book is a wonderful book. I was actually crying at the end oh, because it was dear. just, as you talk about your connection to your family, and you, um, there are uh, descriptions in here of all her children, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just a wonderful read. Again, it's Passionate Journey, My Unexpected Life by Marion Leonard Thompson.